Hi, my name's Dennis. And I've been a gardener for about 50 years. And tending and caring for plants have taught me some things I'd like to share with you about growing high quality vegetables, fruits, and medicinal herbs. So thank you for coming and welcome to my garden. Okay, so here we are. It's the beginning of August. It was 96 degrees here today. And I'm transplanting cabbage. Now, I've had really good gardeners tell me, you are crazy. You're not supposed to be able to do that now. But there are a couple tricks that I'd like to share with you so you can kind of see how this can be done. So, we'll talk later about why I'm doing it in August. That's a whole other thing. But I want, I'm going to take this little cabbage seedling um, that is starting to go into its, once it's in its fourth leaf and its sixth leaf is coming out of the center. That's a very critical spot in the life of a plant. It's saying, basically, I'm about to establish myself. I want to move this little baby plant over to the bed over there, but I want the plant to not know that it's been moved. And there are a couple ways you can do that. So if I take a very sharp knife and I go around this seedling here and pop out a little divot, I'm reinforcing something I did a week ago. I did exactly that a week ago. Now that little plant, when I did it a week ago, hit that edge and went, oh, I better put out some feeder roots. So it's established in that little divot, like in its own little kingdom. So it, it is happy as a clam, and I can go and lift that whole little chunk out, kind of like a big brownie, and that plant will not know it's been moved. But even if it did, I need to do something. I need to balance whatever I'm cutting out with taking things off the top. So I'll go in here with a sharp knife and just take off the lowest leaf and the lowest leaf on that side. I've reduced that by two leaves, but the cabbage is now in a very balanced form. Its root has been cut and leaves have been taken off and basically it doesn't even know it. <laughs> it's as if it, some bug came along and chopped the leaf off and it'll say, okay, I can grow that back again. I can lift it and it will not have any shock. And I'll take it over to the bed over there where I have a little special light well that I did, and we'll go over and take a look at that. So I'll just go in and pop that little guy out of there. Very nice, a very nice seedling. This is a special sauerkraut cabbage, and this bed was where I grew my fava beans last year. I cut them off, I left the roots there, I took the leaves off, them down, I put some compost, a little bit of seabird guano, and some powdered kelp. That cabbage is going to go to heaven. So that bed, this bed has been dug three different times at very critical times in the life of a cabbage. And we'll talk about that later. Right now, that's some good looking dirt right there. And this plant is going to go, that has pretty clear, doesn't even know it's been moved. I just drop that in there, bring up a little bit of soil around the roots. It's 
to establish it in there. It's neutral because the top and bottom have been balanced and cut. But tomorrow it's probably going to be 96. So I don't want to leave that plant in that condition because it's really hoping that October comes. That's what cabbage is really like. So I'm going, what I found here in Sacramento is that if I want to do this, I have to build out of the mulch a light well. So what I found is I can take mulch like this and bring it way up and leave uh, a space down there that I can control during the day. If I see that that cabbage is uh, starting to fade a little bit from being hit uh, by too much sun, I can just give it a little umbrella like that. And then in the evening, give it a little spray, but it's in a light well. And the difference in temperature around that root, um, I've checked with the thermometer is like 20 some degrees, 30 degrees in the middle of the summer. So this is about eight or nine inches of mulch and the light is coming through. But right around the bottom of the cabbage, there's just open space. The mulch does not go around the cabbage. It just goes up into like a little, like a light well. And that cabbage will be very happy in there. It'll get all the light it needs. In a month, that'll be about that big. It'll burst out of there. All of them will burst out and then they take off because uh, it won't be 96 in a month. So uh, that I'm doing that so that this cabbage has about, uh, leaves about that big at the fall equinox. If the leaves are about that big at the fall equinox, that plant is gonna sail into October and November. Uh, I got cabbage heads regularly about that big. And they're sweet and they're juicy and they make great sauerkraut. But it has to endure a month of really, really hot weather. But if you treat it right, it's happy to do that. So uh, what I'd like to do is uh, explain to you a little bit about scheduling and the way some scheduling can be done looking at something called LOD. LOD is the solar length of day. And depending upon where you are growing, certain crops present problems um, in terms of scheduling. So a typical one is cabbage. So I live in the Central Valley of Sacramento and um, I, I start my cabbages in July. And we can get a five days of 100 plus 105 degree temperatures in July, August, and early September. And I have friends who are gardeners who tell me it's impossible to grow cabbage in July, August, and September in Sacramento. And in one way they're correct, and in another way they're not, because there's an issue having to do with cabbage. Um, and uh, on the coast, 100 miles from here in San Luis Obispo, um, it's possible to grow cabbage by sowing it the way you would normally sow it in the, in the fall. And then it goes through a long, mellow winter. San Luis Obispo is on the coast. And typically the temperature, daily temperature is in the 70s all winter. So you get a, uh, you sow the cabbage in, the, in September it germinates, you put it in the ground, it grows through a very long, mild winter, getting plenty of cold rain, and then the spring takes off like crazy, uh, and you get a big head of cabbage in March or April. Um, it's impossible to do that in the Central Valley, just a couple hundred miles away. So there's a strategy to try to grow a cabbage. And what it really has to do with is the cabbage needs to 
go into a heading formation at the time of the equinox. The time of the equinox is when the daylight and the nighttime are equal. So day, day, equinox means equal night. So it's 12 hours daylight, 12 hours night. And in, in, uh, in nature, in the plant world, that day and night equality is a very strong trigger for horizontal growth, for vegetative growth. The opposite to that is the solstice, where your days are much, much longer and your nights are shorter in the summer. Um, but that solstice growth has a tendency to be vertical. So if you look at the plants that are really flourishing at the time of the solstice, they all look like like bean poles, they're going into flower. You don't want your cabbage to go into flower. You want it to stay as a big old flower bud. So the strategy is to have a cabbage go through an equinox at a time um, when the temperatures are moderate. In San Luis Obispo, that's the spring equinox. But here, it's the fall equinox because in the spring, um, when it's 70 degrees in San Luis Obispo, it can be 95 here. So we can't, we can't do that. So I'd like to explain to you a process using the solar length of day, which is the equinox to the solstice to equinox to solstice, using that as a scheduling tool by looking at the times during the life of a cabbage when it's very critical. So I have a chart here that I can show you how to do that. And now let's take a look at it. So to help us understand how this is useful, I've inserted uh, data having to do with the growth cycles of a cabbage here in the Central Valley of California. So on the left, we have the spring equinox here on March 19th, where the sun is crossing the equator. On April 10th, the daylight is 13 hours. And at that time, I do my first turning of the bed where I will be planting cabbage out. The second turning of the bed is when the daylight on May 4th is at 14 hours of daylight. And then you go through the solstice here. And then on August 6th, I sow, and around August 6th, sow, and then a week later or 10 days later, transplant around 14 hours daylight on August 6th and then the transplant starts heading when the daylight is 13 hours on September 8th. So we see that the planting and sowing begins back in April and that is the method that I'm working with to try to fix into the soil an impulse early in the year that the cabbage is going to use later in the year. It's like using the soil to form a kind of clock. In the old days, people understood that the movement from April to May to August to September is a natural cycle of growth that is kind of universal for everything in the natural world. So here we are in October, beginning of October. You see the cabbages. These were planted out in 
early September, late August. They're growing well. They're heading. The heads are about six inches across now, October. They will be made into sauerkraut by December. But they've been planned to do that since April. In the past, gardeners understood that when the soil was disturbed, it was fixed into it the position of the planets on a given day. The disturbing of the soil being fixed on a given day created the condition of the possibility of using the soil, <laughs> using the soil as a kind of clock. So let's return again to this chart and look at the logic of the idea that when I turn the soil, I'm fixing into it a particular pattern. On April 10th, on a 13-hour day, I put soil amendments, I put compost, I put what was remaining of a fava crop and turned it in. And the reason I did on that day, April 10th, because I knew that down the road, when the day was 13 hours, over here, the cabbage was going to start to head. So I'm bracketing the solstice. Whoop. So I'm bracketing the solstice. I'm bracketing the solstice with the pattern of a 13 hour day in April because I know in September at 13 hours of daylight, the cabbage will be forming a head. I'm setting into the soil an impulse for much later in the year. And then once again, on a 14 hour day in May 4th, I turned it once again and then mulched it. And the reason I did that, because I knew that over here in August, I was going to transplant and sow within that 14 hour day bracket. So the soil, by the time the cabbage was transplanted, had been moved three times. Once in April, once in May, and then again transplanting in August. The soil clock was set to allow the cabbages to pick up from the soil the solar impulse of length of day for forming cabbage heads. Mm -hmm.